Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about uh, the katana and the kanda uh, sword that is very popular for the Rajput in North India in Rajasthan. And the katana, obviously, is a very popular sword uh, for the samurai uh, and so on. So, the reason why I take the katana and the kanda comparison i don't say what will be the, uh, is the best or the worst of these two because it's so they are different both the, the one similarity they have is they are are cutting sword they cut they're especially used for cutting and obviously you can trust with the katana uh, and so if we say we have point just like for example if you give one point because the katana can trust and cut and you give uh, the kanda one point because you can use it with a shield uh, like a, a shield you hold in the hand and you can use it without a shield with your both hand is it and you have protection around your knuckle knuckles so that is the thing with the kanda is that your hand is protected because you have the, the what they call the hindu basket so protect your hand and the same time you can hold it with uh, two hands. You see, um, wait, wait, no, wait, sorry for that. To go, if you see, you see up here of the kanda, you can see the little top here uh, over the over the round disc. You see the handle when you hold it with two hand, uh, so you get much more powerful. Uh, much, much more powerful swing when you have it hold it with two hands you can much, much more powerful swing it with the attack uh, and so yeah and the kanda is also double edge uh, all, all the way to the tip of the blade and and some some kandas have um, obviously European blades, but before that they also have Indian made blades and even the most special of the kanda blades is um, have the Damascus steel. That was after the Islamic invasion of India, they get um, Muslim, uh, uh, Damascus steel or before that they have wood steel, also very special steel. Uh, makes the sword very hard and hard sword is very good because it's not so much uh, flexible and it's not very really, really powerful uh, shop so it's much more uh, maybe it's better to say uh, that the kanda is much more like a shopping sword like you shop uh, much more than you cut it's much more like a uh, more, more like a like a kind of axe kind of style cutting comparable the kanda is much more like the katana is much more like a cutting sword and the kanda is more like a shop uh, sword so and the other difference is obviously is what kind of material the sword is blade is made of and what kind of uh, armor the boat have like example if the rush boat have or the samurai have and and obviously when you fight in armor uh, you use heavy weapons like axe or mace or spears or pole arms and you don't use uh, you have special or special daggers that is special designed to attack different part of the armor some special like uh, and many of later on when the Mughals come uh, they have like in uh, like more powerful uh, tips on the, their weapons, like example, their the daggers. They have special daggers that is much more he uh, more uh, thicker of the t on the tip of the blade. Uh, but the, obviously, Mughal's armor is like is chainmail and plate together, and obviously mixed with silk. And uh, it, like a uh, Rashput armor, like when you talk about really the like, high-ranking Rashput. They have like uh, uh, the, the cotton, like a textile armor, 
with chainmail. So it's, the Mughals was much more better armed with armor comparable to the Rajput because I don't know this much quite as much of the armor the Mughals have come from the the Mamluks and obviously from the Timurate and and the, obviously the connection with the Safavids in Iran. Uh, so lots of the weapons when the Mughals come to India uh, after they have conquered uh, the, the, some ki different kingdoms of the Rajput, different king states, they uh, give them much more a new like way of mixed of different culture aspects because the Rajputs originally like back really backward. Uh, if you go back in uh, before they come to India, they was like a nomadic people like the Scythians or the Huns. Uh, one uh, federation of that nomadic people, so their 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 god they have right now is the Hindu god, but they ma they made them the way they made the god different, comparable to other Hindu people. In, some believe in uh, Hindu mythology because they believe in more like a war god. Uh, so there is a reason. Uh, why, like example, uh, the Rajput in the belief systems that uh, is very some is similar in that sense to the samurai uh, belief system that they believe in a w war guard, and they believe if you they have also the same like uh, the samurai when they lose to not fail dishonor they may do sabuku, and the same for uh, the Rajput they. They 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 go out and fight to death, or they they have well, many of them have like a, very much like a warrior ritual. They are very very warlike. Uh, so they believe they they believe they the, the reason why they live they believe that they have to fight uh, to die in war to come to heaven. Like uh, so, they are almost like a living sacrifice to their beliefs uh, and so on. Yeah, so that is a short thing with the Rajput and, and so on. And yeah, and the other thing, for example, when um, when they train with the Kanda, uh, when they are young, they train with clay, like a very uh, big clay, to cut clay, and to see how sharp the sword is, how much the sword can go through a very big boulder of clay, like a hardened clay, uh, and so on. And I uh, say other thing with the samurai, samurai uh, train with uh, to cut the bamboo and obviously they train uh, to cut uh, um, uh, what's the name? They, tr they cut people that are uh, condemned to death and they have, uh, then they can see different name of the sword and see how sharp the sword is when, when you cut the body in two, they see how sharp the sword is. Um, so that is a difference. So both of them, uh, one train uh, on bodies uh, and one train on clay, and obviously they also train on animals. So like they, when they cut uh, like an ox head with the kanda. So this, obviously also the other thing with kanda is the kanda uh, have different shapes. So like the more common thing with the kanda is that the Hindu basket hilt is where when we, we talk about the kanda we think about that. But some kind of blades, like some kind of hilts, even have like um, shamshir uh, uh, blades on it, but this, that is later on, or even uh, an oxa tolvara hilt, and some of them have rapier blades, uh, like very rare, but some have, it's not common, you can find it, I think it's in the book, it's the book uh, name is... Is Islamic armor. I think this two one. Uh, I have both of them. Yeah, but this one of the books is called Islamic Arm Arms and Armor, um, and they yeah, and they have um, uh, a picture with that sword, uh, with a uh, kanda sword, with a rapier blade. So that is the, I think also a bit sometimes difficult because uh, the, the, the kanda 
is like the kanda is not just one type of blade it's not just the, this you see on the picture because like it's not just some kandas so that is difficult when you say for example so kandas sometimes have different shape different sh blade shape uh, and so they make so that is really the cool thing with the kanda especially with the, the indian people like the people in rajasthan or the marathas or the mughals or the sikhs the kalanihan uh, this, the, 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 the cool things here is that they are very open to make new development of their swords. So they, when they see, for example, an old classical style of, um, of a sword blade and they maybe have tried with that first against some uh, enemy and they say, okay, maybe I have to change the blade, but okay, but I still have I take a new blade, new blades kind of style. I, I try a European blade, but I still have the same hilt. But I, I make it different. Th that's a reason why I think, personally, why I like the Kanda so much. Because the Kanda is so is so different every time. You don't gonna get, not all Kanda is the Kanda. Like for example, obviously the Katana is also different, but. It's also, but it's not at that same scale of difference. It almost you can, like they can have the same name, the kanda, but they can look so, they can so be so different blade. So you almost, almostly feel like is that how do they identify as a as a kanda or how? And for me, prob maybe I'm wrong here. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think the kanda means the the the, the hilt. And the handle is the kanda with the Hindu basket, but the blade do not identify as official officially as a kanda. For example, when, you, when they talk about and tulvara, tulvara swords like I think with the ring pommel like the, the like the uh, blade, the tulvara blade is like even. <sighs> Yeah, they have. If you look at like museum books, like armors book of Islamic armor, or even the book of the Rashput armors and armor, arms and armor, and uh, even then they call that this kind of thing. So I, I don't so hundred percent sure how to identify if the sword is to give the name to the blade. Is that the thing, or is the hilt to give the name? Uh, so that I think that is the reason why I think it's very very cool, because so. Yeah, you can get cool, many cool design and and obviously, obviously the the uh, the kanda is not the first sword. Okay, it's not the f like for example the the first kanda blade it was was not with the Hindu basket. Hindu basket is a later thing uh, touched, uh, put into the kanda. It's not the f uh, the kanda is uh, blade was the the blade was before uh, the hilt and later on they put the hilt on to protect their hand um, and so and other thing they also have other blade like this much more forward curved not backward curved and the kanda is straight blade so it's heavy blade uh, and and la later on obviously when the Mughals come because they have a connection Mughal have a connection with the Safavids. And the Safavid used the Shamshir, so the Mughals uh, also used the Shamshir. But the Shamshir is a very, very um, special sword. Uh, I think maybe if you just say that just about the, just about one thing, like about the cut cutting, I think the Shamshir is maybe maybe I I just say maybe uh, maybe the best cutting sword that is curved in the world uh, but it's so many things that it's one thing to cut uh, something that without armor uh, and it's obviously different different kinds of shamshir from different time period and how they are made some shamshir are much more is much better made because they are maybe better material like uh, damascus steel and ever uh, even some shamshir have different example like in the book i have they have a can uh, uh, hindu basket hilt 
but with the sham shear blade on it so obviously you're gonna get so uh, with advantage with this kind of thing um, because you have a protection with your hand and you have the curved sword so you're gonna get um, much so yeah it's very very different how th their blade is made what kind of material and then later on we talk about katana and katana is obviously oxa not it's not the first uh, sword of the Yap samurai elite is uh, is other sword uh, wakusashi and later the long sword for the Yap samurai is, is nodachi and before the nodachi was other sword so it's long sword i don't re exactly remember that name but there's a sword before the nodachi and um, so i think they are what's famous uh I, about when the japanese invade uh, china in the ming dynasty uh, when the japanese pirates and then later on the ming copied that sword and changed it a bit to more uh, work with the chinese kind of style of sword so if i think if you look at um oh, what's the name you look at the sample um a a ming if you look at the uh, um, I don't now. I don't remember the name. You look at the Ming longsword, and you look at uh, the Nodachi uh, comparison, and you see some some similarities. But I think the Chinese longsword under the Ming Dynasty is much more is much more straight, and the uh, Japanese more curved. Um, so yeah they are much more curved uh, and yeah and that is the interesting thing so and um, with yeah so all this kind of thing with the japanese sword is that they're changing for different and they are made in for a special thing like first they are made but they are like when example many f people think that the katana is the sword that is the official weapon for the samurai and that is not true that that is the bow a uh, bow the yomi bow and obviously the uh, for armor like it's the kinabu is a heavy club against armor like with hard wood and uh, it's iron spikes around the club like uh, to make it more heavy when they hit uh, but obviously because the kinabu uh, it's not as popular in uh, like in uh, pop culture that may makes the katana is more popular uh, that is the reason why it's lots of the weapons like for the samurai is put put in the background beside the katana or in Odachi in the yumi bow is maybe the fourth center but you have we have, all have people have to understand when we talk about sword from different culture it's obviously you ha always have different weapons for different things you obviously have the like the hillebard or the spear or the qatar um, so the sword is is not like especially cutting sword that is specially designed for cutting is not not gonna work on uh, armor because it's cutting it's like for example if um, you have a, a doll a doll and you have uh, a real like a uh, real chainmail on it um, and the chainmail obviously chainmail are the sign uh, obviously different different chainmail from different places different made but if you have a chainmail and uh, chainmail are specially designed to stop cutting sword there is the reason for example if you go long back in time uh, for example why example the Celts uh, use chainmail is because they have the sword was uh, a cutting sword or their uh, and later on the Vikings also have chainmail and and so on and later on you have so this kind of thing and so more it's more commonly to see in on the battlefield it's much more common to see uh, people with spear like a spear and shield comparable the sword is a very special thing but is the spear and the axe and the club so it's designed to come through armor and special daggers and some sword can come from through armor but you're not gonna cut with the katana on the samurai armor uh, from to cut through that you, you use it you use different things so obviously you can use to trust the, the 
you can trust with many sword but is you have you have to make do it in a diff special way for example because if you have a if you have a uh, curved sword you have to hold it in a different way to get this uh, trust compared with if you have a straight sword and this kind of thing so yeah so it's really say exactly uh, i think it's almost impossible to say what is the best uh even if you just, even if you simplify it a little bit, and uh, to say what is the best uh, cutting sword that exi have ever existed, it's almost impossible because it's so different material the, their armor have, their blade is made and and so on, and you have to really then you have to have two antique like one antique kanda and one antique katana. And you have to know exactly the materials of each of these two swords, and you have to know what who makes the, made the sword, uh, made from each side, and so on. And you have to find then a sword, a kanda sword, uh, like for example with a straight blade, exactly the same time period as the katana, because if you have a sword that is five year older, uh, with the, and you cannot have uh, like for example a, kata a kanda. Uh, with uh, Damascus blade that, and you have this uh, low, low katana that is not made in high, like for it's very very ma well made. So you have to have exactly exactly the same level of sword ma maker, and you have to f to make it fair to really show exactly what the comparison. If you have one sword that is already from the start, it's much be better made. Uh, because they have better material and the, the guy, the person that make uh, that sword is much more uh, advanced in sword making uh, that's not going to work so you have to have exactly the both have to be very good uh, to make sword and they have to, both of them have to be very good sword, uh, sword cutter For it, you have to sp the different way how you move a sword and how you cut with the sword not all like if, when you, for example, when you uh, look at like some different video game, uh, uh, lots of them have just the same way. You have to swing the sword up and down. Uh, like it's like almost like you almost smack with the sword. Opponent is very different in reality when you uh, use uh, you fight with the sword. Uh, you have a special this way how you move your feet, how you move your arm how exactly in right position the sword have to put uh, be, be when you cut and or if you have a tr if or if you have a trusting sword um so is it's very it's very it's different for example if we talk about the game as as for honor for example if you play have play for honor you know that it's not just lots of swing with the sword or uh, is with the sword and but it's not any like i think real exactly like a manual fighting style how to exactly fight with the sword and obviously if you fight in a real real thing with as this kind of sword and you fight against armor and obviously what is kind of prepared what kind of armor we talk about we talk about shamel or plate or mail or scale or Laminar, laminar armor or textile armor uh, is obviously yeah it's diff yeah it's, it's different so yes yeah, so you have for example is impossible to cut with a cutting sword a plate armor it's not, it's just kind of like it's not it's impossible to do that and yeah so that is the thing here is that it's very it's very interesting when you see for example in uh, in books uh, like a real like a uh, military swordmanship book and you see like the, the detail how the sh different manual manuals how they use swords uh, and you see and then you compare it to, like with the video game it's very extremely different it's, i don't think it's only Maybe one, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I think it's only exactly one or two games that, or 
close to fallen reality to fall to reality swordsmanship it's like kingdom come deliverance is one of them uh, to use uh, how to use armor and sword to see the connection how to really move a sword uh, it's not many games that have this kind of thing to really really show exactly for how really they fight with the sword uh, for example so it's yeah there's lots of things um, so I think I think why for example why the, uh, the katana is is very extremely popular sword is because of uh, pop culture like a manga or video game but is is it's a different when you talk about reality it's a different thing because I think uh, it's more common to see in the manga to see a katana and to see other uh, kind of Japanese weapons and uh, lots of I think almost every not that not it's not true but so many mangas have katanas even mangas do not have anything to do with samurais have uh, uh, katanas and even lots of uh, even video games so have nothing to do with uh, uh, warriors uh, even in modern time like Grand Theft Auto uh, uh, sorry sorry GTA sorry GTA uh, have uh, a katana um, so the katana is extremely very very popular very popular sword in pop in pop culture from different way from manga to fantasy game to uh, like so on and for honor and other kind of game many many different things and then then is the question here is if the katana is so popular how was it before video game and how was it before you have like everybody knows the katanas that like swords or like video games how was it pres presented uh, shown in like for when example when european come like the portuguese uh, or the dutch uh, so for example when they make a trade for example they give uh, something special from uh, from uh, holland to japan and they maybe give a, a katana as trade gift or, or they give something to get example uh, or maybe a portuguese give us some special uh, pistol or a musket and they get the katana uh, yes to take with them home so that is interesting how to see for example when the european uh, get the hands of one example very many very very well made katana like not like a very well made i talk about to really and then maybe to show somebody who really maybe fans to see like later before this kind of thing so this is i think it's very interesting how um how the kata why is kata so popular it, today was it's the same thing uh like in the 15th century as this today as the katana is so popular um Uh, and this kind of thing uh, it's almost almost like uh, it's almost like you have katana is for many people the only sword uh, that exists and they they don't want they, they don't want to see other swords they think the katana is the only sword and e even like even people that works in uh, in museum even even say that sometimes that katana is the best uh, sword and I think it's really hard to say what is the best sword uh, with best cutting sword or best thrusting sword or best shopping sword for example I think I think the best shopping sword like is like the now I don't remember the name but it's like a, a long sword version of like example the the long sword version of the cook read it's a very good shopping and uh, shopper because it's how the shape uh, of this uh, the blade uh, is so you almost get like a, almost like a sword axe kind of thing is the cookery the cookery blade 
and even some um, uh, cook reeds uh, have like the uh, when they come to India they are originally originally from Nepal so when they come to India they have uh, Hindu they have Hindu uh, baskets uh, when, uh, on it and like uh, put a hand uh, knuckle guard protection so you have like the classical cookery you have the protection around your hand so you can get much more closer you don't have to be so worried about your your knuckles or your hand but they are protected with the so they also think there's a lot and some of the um uh, the cookery they make a much bigger so it's like a, almost like a uh, sword and then you have also in india uh what's the name of that sword it's like that is a, a very heavy sword um it's, it's like a almost like a backward band like a, and it's heavy so obviously they have in the same uh, is like they obviously have dif different swords in india or in japan for different purpose so in india for example they have a heavy sword a light sword because heavy sword is to be sometimes similar as maybe as um uh as i say it's sometimes similar for to an axe so we know that even the indian war clubs like, uh, like they, the example the guard the monkey guard have in india is a is a club uh it's a heavy club uh, especially designed to attack against armor or against uh, mail mail and plate or um or textile and obviously textile armor is designed for a special thing because the, the textile armor uh, stops uh, heavy blows like not all the time but they stop heavy blows and make it not as uh, heavy uh, punch like um, the the effect of the weapon will slow down because of the textile protection and then later always you find obviously you always have to find uh, um, a weapon that is gonna win over the armor uh, so you're always gonna f the more di the more different armor you meet uh, the, the, the more the more advanced the sword or the their other weapons will be for they have to always be uh, available available um, to uh, come through armor so if you only have uh, for example uh, one type of uh, armor uh, then so yeah so every culture that obviously meet other people from other culture evolved because they see oh this they have this kind of weapons and uh, okay for example the the samurai in the seven uh, late 16th century they use uh, European uh, European Curest, uh, curest armor and some of them even can uh, protect against musket bullets um, and so on and so that is the thing obviously you have when you meet other people and especially invasion uh, and this kind of thing you for example before that the the, the, the mongol invasion in the 11th century uh, no sorry 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 for that uh, 12 around the 12th century sorry the 12th century uh, the, the, the samurai uh, used a different uh, sword uh, and then they evolved to katana because katana is good sword against uh, like a textile or leather and so even if same thing with like a mongol sword like the um, and so on so yeah so they always have different when they have different connection with different people like for example the mongols uh, was uh, uh, come to the middle east to iran and uh, to russia and the hungary and uh, china uh, so obviously they meet different kind of sword and different kind of uh, pole arms weapons or bows so they see for example, the Mongols that come to uh, Hungary or Ukraine, uh, they see one type of kind of war warrior, warrior elite, 
and foot soldiers and warrior on horseback, like example like the Cumans. And then they see when well, then come to the Song Dynasty, they see uh, fire firearms, like very, very early firearms and kind of other sword and weapons. So, so the, the whole thing when well, is like the, the more people you meet from with trade or in war, you will see new things and the new things will make you s help you to evolve evolve the thing to protect against the new thing but so there yeah, that is the thing why so that the in, and obviously we know that uh the the mongols uh under the under rule under the kubla khan uh when they come to japan they have with them korean warriors and uh, Chinese warriors, um, so it's very interesting. To s exactly, I don't know, and we know that the the uh, the, Mo the the Mongols have uh, some uh, primitive uh, kind of uh, explosive. Like <laughs> what I mean with primitive, I mean they are primitive comparable to explosive. We have to the the armor the armies have today, but it was very advanced at that time was the Mongols explosive um, yeah I think it's on we can see it on paintings on um, like a painting they use that kind of thing and we have to understand that is the first ever if I not say totally wrong how there is the first uh, invasion arm army that invade Japan is the Mongols Mongols and obviously Chinese warriors and Korean warriors so it's under the Mongols rule uh, and the Mongol lost that war because their, their ships were built not as good for a long time out in the sea um, so yeah and I it's, I don't know exactly what kind of armor uh, the the mongols have the elite mongols like the the high ranking officers if there was like textile armor or something else because obviously obviously because of the connection with the mongol empire because of the connection with different people like people in uh, russia or the under the golden horde or people in ilkhanet in iran and um, obviously because we they have so much um connection with uh, uh, nomadic people and obviously in uh, Ukraine or in in uh, like in Russia uh, the Mongols is absolutely not far from it the first and um, like nomadic uh, in invasion inv uh, nomadic warrior warrior nomadic people in Russia because of before, long before that what the the Scythians then after the Scythians the Sarmidians and always then we jump forward the Avars, the Kipchaks, uh, the Cumans, uh, the, the Kazakhs, uh, and so on and so on. The same with India, when India was invaded, like uh, with um, different nom before like, uh, nomadic people, like in India is based on many different kind of people from different places, like, uh, like the Kushites or uh, the Heftalites. Uh, the, or the other word for them is like the white hands. Uh, it's obviously that is the hard thing to say what the Rajput come from. Do they come from the Scythian, one group of the Scythians or the Sarmidians, or they come from the Kushites? Um, uh, so the Kushite was a nomadic people who uh, conquered India. Uh, that was a, what they call Turkic nomadic people, like the example in, later on in China, the Xiongnu, and after that, the Hans. And in the Tang Dynasty, obviously also the same for the Tang Dynasty, you have Turkic nomadic people that uh, was connected with the Tang Dynasty, the Turkey and the Tib Tib Tibetan Empire. Uh, and yeah, so on. And obviously because of this, because of different invasion from different nomadic people, uh, they 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 have find new guards, uh, new belie they new beliefs. So obviously if you look at uh, uh, how, how, for example, how one uh, Hindu uh, believe like when the, the Aryan invasion 
in I think in six fifteen uh, BC fifteen hundred BC uh, the Aryan invasion with the Aryans and uh, people to so speak a uh, your uh, language that connected with people with the European language or uh, language in Iran 